What up y'all, welcome back to the channel and today I've got an absolutely crazy one. See, there's this rabbit hole that I've been going on. Yeah, that's right, I'm becoming a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> there's this man, I've seen his channel, his name is The Food Theorist. He banks out all these crazy food related theories and I'm not gonna lie, this one had me absolutely hooked. It's talking about how vegetables aren't real. Without further ado, let's get right into this. Let's play a game. I'm gonna show you some foods and I want you to tell me what category they fall into. Ready? Let's go. If you guessed vegetable, you're wrong. Nope, not a vegetable. Correct, not a vegetable, except it totally is. Confused? You should be. Vegetables aren't real. There's no such thing and I can prove it. See, that is true. There are certain things it's like, yes, everyone knows at this point that tomatoes aren't a vegetable, they're fruit. Inconceivable. Vegetable is kind of just a catch-all term. Nerd alert! Now, if you don't know, what usually makes a fruit is that it's something that's seed-bearing and it's something that a plant itself produces, whereas a vegetable is more of the plant itself. Vegetable, the plant, fruit, the seed that comes from the plant. That's my understanding. I'm sure this man is about to dunk all over that and absolutely prove me a fool. Vegetables are a lie. All those times I was told I had to finish off the unseasoned, soggy greens on my plate was my villain origin story. Look, okay, so first and foremost, the problem there is, is that your parents just weren't good cooks. What you say about my mama? I understand. I love you, mom. You're a great cook. Bombastic side eye. Vegetables are actually incredibly delicious. It's just all about how you cook them, what you cook them in, and what kind of seasonings you add to them. And that is actually the case for literally pretty much anything. Vegetables do get a terrible rap just for that. They can be absolutely delicious. And if you've ever had roasted Brussels sprouts, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the method of cooking as well. Like I said, you roast some Brussels sprouts, absolutely delicious. You boil them, might as well throw them straight in the trash. They're just soggy and it's, there's a lot of different things that go into it. So, you know, you just gotta step your game up, throw some seasonings on it, roast it usually probably, and you're gonna get yourself a pretty good vegetable. I'm not happy to just pick on vegetables a little bit here. I mean the entire category needs to be wiped off of the food pyramid. You ready? I'm about to make all of our collective six-year-old dreams come true and make vegetables disappear from your food vocabulary forever. I can tell that some of you are skeptical. You might even think I'm full of shiitake mushrooms. It's an absurd premise, right? I mean, an entire food group is fake? And I hear you, so let's start small. First, what even is a vegetable? It may seem like a pretty obvious answer. We know what vegetables are. Most of us eat them every day. Amy eats nothing but vegetables. So how do we define it? If you're stuck, it's not just you. Even old Miriam is woefully unhelpful. A usually herbaceous plant grown for an edible part that is usually eaten as part of a meal. That's actually pretty straightforward. I uh, I get it, like, it's a bit broad, but so is a lot of things. Like, what is meat? Uh, it's what comes from a living animal. I could see if this is gonna go into an argument about there could be greater breakups within vegetables, which I mean, there are. There's, you know, like the leafy greens and like all that kind of stuff, but like definitions kind of have to be vague sometimes. So basically any plant we can use to make food. It gets worse if you look at the origin of the word. Vegetable was first used in the 15th century, vaguely describing neither animal nor mineral. Thanks, 15th century guy. If it's not an animal, it's a vegetable. Water, vegetable. This table, vegetable. Obviously, that doesn't help us at all. That's gotta be taken out of context. Emit or eat, that's eaten, you fool. I am slain! Of course, a fucking table isn't a vegetable. The vegetable. I am the table! I would bet any amount of money that was taken out of context. It was anything eaten that is not an animal or a mineral. You can see the problem here. By the modern definition, all of these are vegetables. A pineapple is part of a plant grown for food. So is celery. And guess what? Fries are made directly from potatoes, which are part of a plant. Meaning that the scariest twist of today's episode is that McDonald's is the biggest distributor of vegetables in the world. Yeah. Obviously, this can't be a definition of vegetables because it includes all starches and fruits and literally every part of every plant under the sun and ground. That's well, every part of every plant that you eat 
is a vegetable to my understanding and he brought up the fries thing and I'm sure that that type of stuff is going to come up here later in the video. It's processed, right? You have to do some stuff to it. It is at this core, it is just a potato. You have to, you know, fry it, you mold it, you do all that kind of stuff. So no, a french fry isn't a vegetable. You big dummy. It's nothing like what we're looking for and isn't actually a practical definition for anything. Putting the dictionary aside though, the culinary world doesn't really have a good definition for them either. It's pretty much just all plants. Really, the only distinction that's made is making a carve out for fruits, which really just boils down to culinary application, like whether they're used in desserts or not. Vegetables are typically tougher and taste blander than fruit due to lower sugar content. And some other definitions state that they likely require cooking to eat. But with that being said, there are plenty of veggies that don't require cooking. Tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, pretty much anything you can throw in a salad. I mean, yeah, I think cucumbers is the only one there that you really argue doesn't require cooking. Like, you can eat a tomato. Actually, tomatoes are pretty good raw. So are carrots. But like, they're gonna be better cooked. You're gonna be happier if you cook. Carrots especially. I think carrots is the one that really caught me up. You can eat tomatoes like on a sandwich at, or in a salad or something like that. And carrots you can, you know. If you... <laughs> What's up, Doc? Carrots are gonna be way better if you cook them. That's that's just facts. We all know this. Jenny and me was like peas and carrots. Another common distinction people make is how vegetables have a savory flavor and they're used in savory dishes. Again, massive list of exceptions. Shallots, carrots, and beets, especially when cooked are all sweet. There are also definitions of vegetables that pin them as greens or the non-woody parts of plants. I'll give him that. Vegetables can be a lot of different things, especially depending on what you cook them with. Those ones that he specifically mentioned do have a very sweet flavor to it. And I mean, they're generalities. Meats tend to be savory. Put the right type of seasoning and marinade on it. You're going to get a sweet tasting meat. I mean, it is possible, you know, it still has that savory there. It's kind of all about how you mix and match it. That's what makes the culinary world fun. There's a lot of testing. There's a lot of trial and error, and there's a lot of new things that can come out of it. Fortunately, I have to be that guy again and point out that there are quite a few exceptions. I'm sure most of you already got to this counterpoint, but I'll say it anyway. Not all vegetables are green. Sure, there's a lot out there that are, but just as many that aren't. Nobody said that vegetables had to be green. Where did that come from? No definition has ever said that vegetables had to be green. This man, I feel like, is just being controversial for the sake of being controversial. Bamboo shoots are edible, very common in East Asian cuisine, and considered a vegetable. So even that that rudimentary distinction between vegetables and fruit and the definition itself are completely bunk. TLDR, there is no definition of a vegetable that exists that isn't immediately disproven by a ton of other vegetables. So where does that leave us? What the heck are we actually eating? Let's go back for a second and focus on the humble tomato. The whole it's a fruit thing stems from the botanical definition of a fruit. And thankfully, the definition of fruit isn't completely bananas like vegetables is. Well, whatever, you know what I mean. In bot the scientific classification of plants, the seed-bearing parts that develop from the ripened ovary of a flowering plant are considered fruits. If you remember back to fourth grade when you labeled the parts of a plant, you did things like the petals and the stamen and all that jazz. Anything in that region is considered a fruit. Simply put, a fruit is something that is produced by a plant rather than being the plant itself. Now I nailed that definition of a fruit. <laughs> Yeah, so there are a lot of things that come. Cucumbers was one of those ones I didn't know for the longest time was a fruit. You know, peppers is, those make more sense, but like certain things that anything that you have ever gone and picked right off of a, a plant of any sort, it's probably a fruit. Think about that next time. But also, you're not original if you did think about it before because the information is just out there. We just don't necessarily get it taught super well. Specifically, the reproductive part. By this definition, the tomato is the product of the Solanum lica persicum plant. More commonly, and easily name the tomato plant, therefore proving that tomatoes are in fact fruit. What's more interesting though is that this can be said for a lot of vegetables. Cucumbers are from the plant Cucumis sativus. Peppers are a product of the capsicum annuum plant. Sweet corn, eggplants, all types of squash, peas, and pumpkins are actually fruits. In fact, a massive number of the vegetables you eat every day, and even the ones your mom is all up in your business about, are 100% fruit. And Yeah, so okay, this point I do fully agree with. There's some there that I didn't even think about squashes, gourds, that kind of a thing. But yes, they are also, you know, they kind of have the essence of vegetables, but in the end, they are fruits. And I am a science guy, so I will say, you know, I concede his points there. There are a lot of things that people assume are vegetables, when in reality, they are actually fruits. Science rules. 
Watch out, because it's not just the fruits with skins and mushy insides we're talking about. This also includes things like the little buds on broccoli. Those are flower buds, the reproductive part of the plant. So is cauliflower, at least the tips of it, which are actually a flower. This also knocks out artichokes, capers, and zucchini flowers if you're playing along at home. And of course, all this fruit talk... That one fucked me up. I did not realize that those little things were actually the buds of flower. I mean, it makes sense for cauliflower. It's like literally in the name, but that's one of those ones that I just kind of thought... What do you- what do you mean? <laughs> you got some good points. ...leaves us with the obvious question. If these vegetables are fruit, have we just been mislabeling these two categories for years? Is it all fruit? No. Celery isn't a fruit. Neither is radish, cabbage, spinach, rhubarb. There's a whole bunch of other stuff to deal with here, and even though we've taken a good amount out of this food category, we still have work to do. If even the science dedicated to naming the thing is utterly unhelpful, things aren't looking too good for veggies. But at least by knocking out all the fruits, we can agree that any part of the plant that isn't the reproductive portion of the flower is fair game. Thing is, this actually blows the whole thing wide open. But before we dive into that, you know what is real? All those subscribe. <laughs> yeah, we get to the portion now where there is an ad in the middle of the video. And since I am not getting the bag for this, we are just gonna go ahead and skip. Now, we gotta talk about greens. Yeah, greens are plants. Greens are the seeds of plants called cereals. Wheat, rice, corn, barley, all grains, all parts of plants. Those grains are collected, ground into the fine powder we know as flour, mixed with water and yeast, and voila, bread. So Matt's crazed deep dive into the history of the world according to bread? <laughs> no siree, it's the history of the world according to vegetables. But grains are seeds, and seeds aren't. No, see, that's some bullshit. In order to make bread, you have to process it. You have to grind it down and form it and form it. That's like, it, it, it's like saying that bark is the same thing as this table. <laughs> That is not correct. It's not. You have to process it. You have to do a lot of stuff to make to it. Oh, I get into this argument with my partner. It's not a real argument, but it's a fun thing we like to mess around with. And she argues with me that basically spaghetti with red sauce is the same thing as pizza. Because at its base and everything, you know, you have a starch, you got red sauce, you got meat. It's all the same thing. And I vehemently disagree with her because they wouldn't be called different things and they weren't the same thing. They taste different. They are cooked differently. They got different elements. It's a different presentation. So it is, to me, a different thing. You guys should let me know down in the comments below how y'all feel about the spaghetti versus pizza kind of a thing and whether or not processing really changes the thing. But I, I think it does because you're, you're, you're adding different elements and you're creating a whole totally different thing. You're not just going to go and eat barley straight off of the fucking plant. You will eat some barley and bread, but it's different. Again, it went through some processing. It went through some refinement. So, uh, no, it's not a vegetable because it's a created product. Boom. Dumped Don. That's right. That's my theory. You got played. They aren't technically part of the plant. If anything, they're actually part of the fruit. Well, setting that can of worms aside for a moment, there are plenty of seeds that actually are considered vegetables, though. You have peas, pretty much every bean, and also, weirdly enough, corn. So we can't make the blanket distinction of removing seeds from the vegetable category. Oh, no. Did I just redefine bread as fruit? Luckily for my sanity, no. One thing that all those seeds I listed have in common is that they come from herbaceous plants that do not produce fruits in the botanical sense. They don't develop in the fruit, so the seeds and bread can comfortably fall within the grains category they're already in. But they won't be alone for long. See, we've knocked out a huge number of foods formerly known as vegetables and assigned them to fruit categories. But wait, hold up. So with what he was just saying there, like the seeds, right? Okay, so, uh, okay, okay. All right, I was just dunking all over him, but he may have just fucked me up again. I'm not gonna lie, because with the pods, like in, in an edamame pod, the seeds, uh, it's like the fruit, so... What is this whole like herbaceous plant like why because that's still this the seeds right so then it's but and it's not formed within the the flat but it's the seed so oh no I, he might have got me maybe vegetables aren't real i don't know that one got me edamame just ruined me a little bit ah oh, you you're at it again. Well played. Stuff that's considered hallmarks of the vegetable category. Things like celery, spinach, and carrots. The easiest one of those to peel off and send packing is carrots, which are not and never have been a vegetable. Carrots, along with garlic, beets, potatoes, yams, and anything else you can dig up is a geophyte. Botanically, geophytes are plants with a bulb where they store energy. Think everything from spring onions to tulips to potatoes and include a big category of foods that have been misclassified as vegetables. These are what we would usually consider 
consider starchy vegetables. But they're nothing like vegetables like celery or green beans and their taste, texture, or nutrition content. They're way closer to bread than they are to spinach. So much so that on some things like a keto diet, these kinds of foods like carrots, beets, potatoes, and even onions are off limits. If you still need any convincing on this one, the USDA is considering reclassifying potatoes as a grain in 2025 because they make no sense as a vegetable. Everything in this category already is or is soon to be recognized for what it is. Basically Okay, okay, I'm gonna give you partial credit on this one. I hear what he's saying about the fact that, you know, a starch kind of has different composition and everything to it. It's the geophyte, it's grown differently. Botanically, the plant looks a little bit different. It's grown underground, you know, and it's got different tastes and it's got different nutritional value for your body. And it, it is in its own food group, which by the way, I think they were talking about the food pyramid and I think he talks about that, but the food pyramid's all bullshit if you don't know. Like, it's just garbage. The breakdowns are just completely made up. It was just some shit that they made up to sell food back in the day. But anyways, there is, you know, certain things that we know now that you should eat in your body. Starches to a certain degree are one of them. There is an argument to be made that certain things we consider vegetables do have different nutritional value for our body than, you know, other vegetables. However, if you look at meats, not all meats have the exact same nutritional value as others. Seafoods and chickens arguably have some more nutritional value to them than a red meat or something like that, if you look at it. So I would say, again, because these do come from plants, which is what we came from earlier, it is still a plant, still a vegetable to me. So partial credit, they do have different nutritional value, but uh, you're still fucking wrong because they are still vegetables. Boom, get played. You're not winning this one, all right? You almost had me there. Basically a very planty bread. Instead of greens, this category should from now on be known as the seeds and starches. So we've jettisoned most of the former veggies into either fruits or seeds and starches. Is that it? What's left then? Well, there is a group of foods remaining, much smaller than we originally started with, that pretty much all fall into the category of stems and leaves. Makes you feel like you're just chomping on your own backyard, doesn't it? Not that appealing. Some of the most common veggies in our collective diets come from this remaining category. And, at the end of the day, this is the closest we actually come to a vegetable in the real world. All your leaves. Spinach, kale, cabbage, kohlrabi, mustard greens, collard greens, watercress, chickweed, which is a real thing, are all exactly what they look like. Leaves. Celery, rhubarb, bamboo, sugarcane, they're all the stems. Finally, a category of things that actually make sense to fit together. Those are parts of plants. He showed a plant. He literally showed a diagram of plants earlier. And if you look at them, they have leaves and they have stems. Again, from his definition that he showed earlier, they, they're plants, so they're vegetables. Like, he's not even trying to argue with this one at this point. He absolutely tried to be a conspiracy theorist and be all big with your headlines and crazy. Come on, like, these are still vegetables. Obviously vegetables, again, this man is perpetuating the vegetable bad rap, and I am not for it. Vegetables are great. You should eat vegetables, eat healthy. I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian by any stretch. I do often eat vegan or vegetarian a few days out of the week, you know, because you've got to mix it up. you got to have a healthy diet. It's just just, just eat vegetables, okay? These two groups of food items are eaten because they're high in fiber, extremely low in calories, and sometimes have the added kick of an additional mineral like iron or calcium. If there were anything in the world that actually qualified as a vegetable, these would probably be it. That said, we've already shown that the definition of a vegetable is scorched earth. The gum I chewed this morning was probably a vegetable by today's standards. So actually, it would be much more appropriate to take the small group of food items by a botanically appropriate name, stems and leaves. Not only does this actually tell you what you're eating, it makes no bones about the idea that it's probably gonna be uncomfortably good for you. And if you have any hope of making it to an empty plate, you better be ready to cook these things in a lot of butter. It's honest, it's straightforward, and it's not vegetables. Because there's no such thing as a vegetable. In the end, what you thought were vegetables 15 minutes ago have never been and will continue to never be what popular culture tells you is a vegetable. Because nutritionally, botanically, and even with the smallest modicum of common sense, it's clear that they fit into practically every other food category, leaving no need for vegetable to be one. So the next time you pick up a carrot, know that you're eating a starch. The next time you're craving a fruit, there's a cucumber right there in contention with apples and oranges. And when someone tries to call broccoli a vegetable, kindly let them know that there's no such thing. You're eating a flower covered in a lot of cheese, hopefully. Just like so many other topics on this channel, knowing that there's no such thing as a vegetable can free you from this idea that you have to eat 
eat them without actually knowing why. Now you can choose your foods based on what they're actually doing for your body and what part of the plant they're coming from. Not because they came out of some random assortment of fruits, roots, and stems that are all completely different and give your body completely different things. And just like the archaic food pyramid, which is now just a plate, it's time to phase out the word vegetable from our vocabulary. Never to be used again as a gatekeeper to all things sweet post dinner. But until then, the next time your mom tells you to eat your vegetables, feel free to spring for that handful of breadsticks. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Okay, so to conclude this, you know, I've done a lot of dunking on this man. I would say slightly rightfully so in this case. He had some very valid points. He brought up my point about the food pyramid, which again, totally a wash now. It's a food plate. It's more again, it's about balancing out your diet. And he did bring up a very, very important point. We should be educating ourselves more about what we eat, what we put into our body. Yes, a vegetable is a bit of a catch-all term and there's some gray lines and there's some iffy, like is this, is it not? And that's just across the board. That's with anything. That's with fruits, that's with meats, that's with grains, you know. Everything is good in moderation. Uh, not everything. Certain things probably aren't good in moderation. I don't think crack is good in moderation. But a lot of things can be good in moderation. And you should know what you're eating, how you're cooking it, and what kind of effect that that has on your body. I do think this video was very fun. It had some very good points. It was educational. There were some points there that did make sense and were true from a factual standpoint. It was fun. I did a lot of dunking on it, but I really did like this video. I'm still going to keep calling most of those things vegetables. I mean, know how you feel about this are vegetables not real maybe you guys bought into the theory a little bit more than me comment down below let me know whether you like this video or not give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more fun content like this until next time peace out y'all